go. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Love Era Podcast. I'm your host, Miss Kev on stage, and I'm joined by my husband and co-host. Kevin Allen Fredericks. Your whole name. Yes. Brebritz. Uh, and we are the host of the Love Hour podcast where we talk about life, love, and the pursuit of happiness. We are not professionals. We are just two people that have been married for a long time, going through life. Sometimes we get it right, but more often than not, we don't. Um, <laughs> it's the truth anyway. And so we're just here talking about, you know, our life experiences. As I have been thinking about closing, this isn't on my notes, but this was happening for me today. As I have been thinking about closing out the love hour, I have this morning, I was literally, uh, what's the right word where you're kind of like reminiscing? I don't know the right word, but kind of sitting in the moment reflecting is the better word. Thank you. Reflecting on how much doing this podcast has helped me. In terms of the guests that we've had, the conversations that we have had, the research that I've done to show up bigger or not bigger, but show up better in the world as myself and as a wife, as a mother, all of those things. And I just I'm really grateful, actually, to have done this platform for as long as I've done it. And then I also feel you know, really kind of at peace about closing it out as well. Um, I do have still have moments where I kind of go back and forth, but I think for the most part, I feel like an overwhelming sense of like, that's done. You know, I, I, we did just get an email. Yeah. Seasons. I, we got an email from, um, audio boom. Uh, I have to do the schedule for next year. And I was like, Oh my God, I have to tell them I'm going to stop. And so I've been hesitating on that because that like, yeah. Makes it official. Yeah, th- I, this isn't the first time. I think the last. Well, child, you're right. Yeah, you're right. So let me just officially say that. Uh, December, sec- probably the second week of December, uh, will be the last love hour. It's official. Ah! I I feel ah! a huge, almost like a relief, but I also, f- I do feel a huge sense of peace. I feel like I have done what I was supposed to do and I can let it go without any like issue or qualm. Yeah. Like I don't feel, um, I feel okay about it. I do too. Listen, seasons change. For me, I think my reasons, Melissa and I reasons are different. The reason I'm okay with it is because over the last couple of years, my personal life, our personal life, has become more of a thing to be targeted. Yeah. And I'm kind of like, you know, the, the term closing ranks. I've kind of like, I've always shared openly and freely right. pretty much everything I've thought. And once I saw some like chinks in the armor, you know, things getting leaked out of Patreon, things like that, mm-hmm. my personal life becoming uh, podcast fodder. And I'm okay with that. Like, yeah. not okay with that, but I understand that's the nature of the business. I do that on my own podcast. However, freely giving that information and all that stuff, I'm like, I could make it a little less easy and just be an entertainer and use the entertaining parts of life to entertain. And I think my my dad, you know, has always said this and Melissa kind of as well, but my dad, even more of having some sacred things remain sacred. And we've basically let our marriage be an open book in real time. Right. And that is (laughs) increasingly more and more difficult when people use it against you. And it's just that at this time of my life, I don't want to do that. I don't, I don't want to do that anymore. Right. And the love hour, the way it is, Melissa, to her credit, to your credit, she never wanted it to be what I'll call a pop culture love podcast. Right. There's so many times there was something in the news and she's like, ah, oh, they're, they're going through it. I don't want to make that a topic. And that just makes it easier to produce. Yeah. But since Melissa's angle was that was not that, then that meant our life often was the uh, source material. And as we move forward in life, I don't want to do that no more. And I'm okay. Like, and the good thing about the love hour too, and I don't want to belabor the point, the topics are evergreen. They really are. So if you decide in five years, you're going to get married, you could still run through that podcast and learn a lot up until where we were, what, where our marriage is in December, 2021, You'll have all that to Absolutely. give. And, you know, maybe you, you know, you've talked about possibly doing an episode here and there if you really feel inspired, but it's also a hard podcast to produce a pod. This is the only podcast in our realm of stuff that is Melissa generated every topic. Yeah. 
Here's the thing is easy to produce. The internet is full of stuff. Bought and Beautiful, we re- mostly are reviewing shows yes. or mukbangs are just kind of chatting. Um, Dear Kev, people were sending questions in. And once they stopped, it came harder to produce. Yeah. So this one is like, what can I say? What am I learning? And then also, and I'm going to stop for her after this. <laughs> to use your life as content. And then have people pick apart your life right. in comments and ridicule you when you are out here telling them, here's my mistakes. Right. Yes, it's, well, here's enough arrows. Yeah. I don't want to invite the ones. I'm right. going to have to deal with the ones that are coming in. People pull us into drama that we have nothing to do with. I don't want to say, hey, look at me. Here's where I messed up in my marriage. Ridicule me right. or ridicule my wife or ridicule us. So we love you. We will entertain you in different ways. And this is the last thing I'm going to say. And I know I've said that a lot. You're also producing a lot of content. Brand deals. Love on stage. Love on stage is a heavy lift. It is is a heavy lift. The brand deals, heavy lift. Being a mom while your husband is gone for more than half of the week. Much easier in a pandemic when the kids just wake up and go to school. Taking them when they want to go and leave at different times and soccer and games. It's just different. So I I love you guys. Um, Someone said congratulations on completion. And um, I'm going to accept that. I think completion is the right word. I feel like, uh, yeah, this is a completed chapter in my life. Even this morning as I was thinking about topics, I was like, Loki, what haven't you talked about, girl? Yeah, and a lot of these podcasts, they they end up recycling the Man. same thing over and over. And I could. I mean, I, I'm thinking about doing another money episode uh, here soon, so maybe I will. But, you know, I feel like I have completed this journey. I'm okay with it. And, um, yeah, so that'll be it. Uh, I, that's almost really this week in the uh, Frederick's house. That was my uh, first kind of segment. Uh, the other thing is you have shows this weekend in Houston. I will be at the Friday show. You ain't taking no pictures. Oh, you guys aren't doing that. No, no, and you're not. And Delta variant in in Houston, Texas is high. So, no. I forgot. But, you know, hello, hello. Hello, hello. The first time. Yeah. I I didn't. I I turned down a lot of pictures this weekend because I was like, COVID, man. Yeah, no, COVID is real. We got to keep ourselves as safe as possible. And the kids are. uh, the kids, my kids are back in school. Isaiah's been in school for three weeks. He's had four COVID cases already. Every other day, the school is like somebody That's got that big. Once bid. a week, they are having a COVID case. My sister's, uh, my niece had a COVID case at her school. Of course, she's in South Carolina where they just do what the heck they want to do. Uh, but yeah, that is actually very, very real. Um, so yeah, I'm sorry, y'all. I'll try to get on the stage with them or something. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, and I will be, never mind. That's it. <laughs> I was going to say Atlanta, but child, we there in support. Yeah. Um, all right. That's it for that. Did you want to add anything else? I'm not going on the road as much next year. Is this your final kind of? It's my final thing. I've been, th- I've been, th- I don't know what it will look like. We're in the early stages of planning, but w- in order to make the streaming service work and also just my own, this, this touring schedule and everything else we do is brutal. It is. I was looking at stuff that other comics do, and the ones who do this much touring are not also building a streaming service and also producing three or four podcasts. Yeah. They usually go hard on the weekends, and at home they recover, and then they go hard on the weekends. We go hard on the weekends and the weekdays. Yes. And every day is exhausting. I took a nap every day last week on tour, even though, and I went to bed early. Usually I stay up to two or three just because it takes a long time to settle in. I went to sleep at 12 o'clock Eastern time. Woke up at 10 and took a nap every day around 3 o'clock. And I, I, no. No. And it I makes be, it I was, hard. Last week, I was just, I was well, sluggish. Yeah. We have not, no breaks no. until Halloween. And I think the other thing is people are saying you need to rest. One of the things that um, is kind of the downfall, I think, of, like, the world of entrepreneurship. That's why, honestly, people be like, I want to do this. I'd be like, why? Go to work. And then clock out and go home and then you're off right. because this world. Yeah. You get a 401k. Like it's so much, I don't know. Uh, 
I was talking literally to someone yesterday and they were asking me about vacation. And I literally said, I have never not worked on vacation. Mm -hmm. And I mean, as soon as I decided to kind of step into this world of entrepreneurship, I've never not worked on vacation. Something is always coming up, whether it's a brand deal or this. Yesterday, I said this to Kevin. This actually isn't to pat myself on the back as much as it's to say, like, you have too many things that you're doing. By what time was 1130? Yes. By 1130 yesterday, I had had five meetings. Uh, I had had made the kids, bre- woke up, made the kids breakfast. I packed their lunch. I'd started dinner and took I, I came home, the Josh, kids to school. Separate schools. Separate schools. I have to leave my house at uh, 650 to get to Isaiah school by 730 so I can get back home by eight o'clock so I can drop Joe off by 830. And Mondays are the days they fly into town. So Kevin is not there to help yet. When I got home, <laughs> breakfast was, had been eaten, eaten. House was clean. Melissa was on a Zoom, camera off, also making lasagna. <laughs> and I was like, girl. And she never stopped. Went to the grocery store twice. I did because I forgot something. I took Joe to the soccer, um, you did to soccer to practice. Soccer. When I came home, Melissa was drained i was so tired the bed was like come on you you, you, you don't go to me she didn't wrap her hair no i didn't and i had a brand deal i need to shoot that's due on thursday and since we're flying tomorrow i need to shoot it today um not with you i'm doing myself but i was like honestly this is not okay i'm texting my son about school that's why i'm going back and forth uh this is not it's not okay to live a life that is so busy that you feel like you can't um get into a routine or a ritual and rituals are important because it's the only way to make sure that your life isn't out of whack and one thing that is often out of whack are our multivitamins and ritual is a multivitamin company that you know and trust and they have not only multivitamins but they also have protein powders which we all know protein powders can and are often not good I do not know a better or nicer way to say this. They're often chalky. They're often oh, powdery. So and they're just not something that you typically enjoy, at least me, myself, personally. But the truth is, deep down uh, at a cellular level, we all need protein. And it's about more than just muscles, especially as we're getting older. We all need um, our protein. And so one way to get it is through their protein powder shakes. And that's why Ritual is introducing their essential protein, which is here to shake things up. They have amazing flavors that actually taste really, really good. Their protein powders, their essential protein powder. Uh, they come in there they make different kind of varieties so that way they could uh, target whoever you are so they have an 18 plus they have a 15 plus and they also have one for pregnancy and postpartum all right it is really really simple to use all you do is add the water you add the protein and you can put it in your little to-go situation shake it up add water shake it up and sip throughout the day and voila you've had your protein for the day it is 20 grams of pea protein plus a complete amino acid profile made with essential clothing help to fill in your common dietary gaps which is one of rituals main thing they're always looking for ways to help fill in your dietary gaps because we often aren't eating what we need to to get like a complete full nutritional balance uh have a nutritional balance day and so their goal is always to help fill in those gaps so why not shake up your ritual to make trying something new less scary which will offers a money back guarantee if you're not 100% in love. Plus, my listeners get 10% off during your first three months. Just visit ritual.com slash love hour. Love hour. To add essential protein today. That's ritual.com slash love hour. Love hour. All right. All right. So let's talk really quickly about this situation that's going on with Seth Curry's parents, Dell and Sonia Curry. They are divorcing after 30 years of marriage. And while that is really sad, obviously, anyone divorcing, I think they're married for, actually married for like 33 years or something like that. Man. It's 30 plus years. Uh, they're like close to 60. I think they're both like 57 or 58 or something like that. So anyway, they're getting a divorce, which is really sad. I think anytime you hear of a couple 
uh, divorcing, it's always obviously not your not the news that you wish to hear. But what has been interesting is not necessarily that. It's this tweet thread that's been going ah. viral by Dog. Solomon Missouri. So funny. Okay, and a, do you want to give a, ca- a recap of it? I want to sh- read every okay. tweet. Okay, start at bud. So he retweeted the article, okay, at Solomon, Missouri, and his tweet threats is as so, in response to Dale Curry getting divorced after 30 years. This is a tweet thread from a man to a man, okay? Bud, and by the way, just so you know, for whatever reason, his name has (laughs) this thing in it. It's hilarious. So it really helps seal the deal. Bud... Let me tell you something. You don't want to be out here. You think you want to be out here because you're not out here. When you get out here, you ain't going to be out here no more. Last time you was out here, out here was different. You think it's something better. I come to let you know the best you're going to get is what you already got. I don't know why you don't want to do the work. You're going to come out here and you ain't going to like it. All they do is start podcasts and talk about (laughs) plate fixing. 14 minutes being out here, you're going to start saying, these females. If you can make it work, do so. You don't want to be out here learning TikTok dances and falling off milk crates. Love the wife of your youth. All caps. All caps. (laughs) Bud, they want rounds now. You better pray about coming out here. You think it's a game till you're in the middle of 60,000 people in a panty and she pointing her finger at you all hard, rapping Flo Millie lyrics. Just for clarity, one of Flo Millie's popular songs is These Niggas Weak. (laughs) That's the song I imagine she's rapping hard. Do you like turmeric, charcoal ice cream? You better learn to like it. (laughs) You don't know nothing about a sneaky link. Now you're knocking on the door of a 22-year-old with three other roommates because she got a side piece. You got to be wearing a hottie t-shirt by Thanksgiving. You better ask your wife to forgive you. You better go listen to Lemonade and pray about That's it. That's my favorite. <laughs> Hello, and this one. You don't have the cholesterol to be out here. They're not eating butter pecan no more. Blue Bell, <laughs> Blue Bell ain't out here. Do you know what a group chat is? You better learn because you finna be the subject. Do you know how to make a mimosa? Tulum. <laughs> He just tweets to Loom. To Loom? These people are 60% crab leg, 30% iced coffee, and 10% vape pen. <laughs> Beloved, whatever went wrong, go back and make it right. They pegging out here. <laughs> I'm not trying to scare you. I'm trying to prepare you. These people are children of Rihanna, born, born in, in the, the fires, fires of, of chaos. chaos. That's also my favorite line. <laughs> you ready? <laughs> <laughs> you ready to leave your wife of 30 years till you wake up in your body surrounded by rose <laughs> quartz and moon water? My message is simple, Dale Curry. This is a Street Fighter picture of Guile beating up Zangief. Go home and be a family man. Oh, my gosh. May the Lord add a blessing <laughs> And uh, healing to the readers, hearers, and doers of his most holy word. Oh, this is so funny. The reason why it's so funny to me is because obviously we have been married for a very, very long time. We've been married for 20, uh, no, we've been together for 21 years. We've been married for 17 years. That is a long time. So we also haven't been in the quote unquote street out here. And I for real don't know what a sneaky link is. Yeah, I was like, okay, some of the stuff I didn't get, but overall. I don't know what a, I, I was like, dang, I ain't even 30 years in. What I don't it? know. Oh. oh, sneaky link. Got it. I just became a millennial. <laughs> What the kids sneaky linking? What does sneaky As the link? Kids say. So you is it a is it on like being on the down low? That's what I would, like a little. Yeah. It's like. Like. But like, is it because I don't want my friend to know? Because actually, that's his girl. Oh, I don't, maybe. Oh. Might be. I just want to understand the context behind the. Sneak. What is a sneaky link, children? Ah. 
Are you are you sneaky linking on a friend, or you just don't want anybody right. to even know? Don't be in a don't be a sneaky link girl because he ashamed of you. Huh? Might want a sneaky link too. That's what I'm saying. But if or either way, I don't want to be the sneak because you are ashamed of me. But like, listen. But if we're friends, right? Like, what if? My little secret. Uh. Anyway, the whole thing is, I obviously we haven't been in the dating world in a long time, but in doing the dating show, yeah, whoo. You Don't talk be about, Pacific. I'm not. Okay. I'm just saying. You talk about being grateful. That it was I'm just such, grateful that I don't have to be out there. It was such an eye opening experience. In the last uh, episode of Love on Stage, if you are unfamiliar, um, I did this prayer, and it was low key being funny. But like one of the things I had interviewed so many women, and. One of the things they're always talking about is like, men don't be approaching me. Men don't be, you know. Really? Yes. And so it's like this idea of. At all? No. And I think that's why women are like, I'm sick of sitting, being a, you know, on the sideline, being a sitting duck, waiting for someone to say goose. I'm going to just approach you. And nobody's, nobody's, nobody's even nobody, patting. Nobody yes. even saying duck. No one's. Ducking. Yeah. All they're doing is ducking. <laughs> All they're doing is ducking. I think people are tired. Mm. And this was the collective, I believe, feeling of people who are single. And like, I do want to be in a long term committed relationship. It's the warning of like, I don't know what you think this is. Y'all be thinking it's fun because y'all be watching Insecure. It's not fun. Listen, I already know, like, after 21 years, we, I haven't dated another person since the year our Lord and Savior 2000. Okay. Dating websites didn't even exist yet. No. Okay. There was no, not even eHarmony. Do you know how the many. smartphone hadn't existed. Do you know how many of the women. There was a thread in my book club and I never say names and I, I don't think I'm because I'm not saying the name. But how many women are like, girl, I got on this, you know, um, dating app. I'm so excited. And then, you know, that thing where they're literally like the next day is like false alarm, girl. He did this, he did that. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah. The turmoil, the emotional roller coaster that is online dating. I'm frustrated for y'all. It is, it, it, if you haven't watched <laughs> The Circle, I know. The Circle is it, an experiment I, it, of people trying to learn each other strictly through online mm -hmm, situation. Mm -hmm. It is so easy to misread tone. Man. So easy to misread context. Yeah. Si oh, never. Oh, Sarcasm? Gone. Never. Gone. And it's like. Oh, I feel like we made a connection. And then on the other end, like literally on one camera, they're like, I think we made a connection. Conversation went really well. And then they pan over to the next room and they're like, I played her. She don't even know. I'm not into this. I'm actually lying. And they're not here. even trying to date. Exactly. They're trying to win money. Imagine they're trying to date. Listen, it was a good reminder for me. I don't even be thinking like that. I'd be like, you know, I'm going to make it work. I'm going to make it work. But like. The fact that I'm removed from some of the lingo. Oh. Go love the wife of your youth. Love the wife of your youth. Because I mean, like, listen, man, Melissa and I have had a long time. There's issues you have when you've been married together for 20 years to the same person. But th that pales in comparison. Can you imagine, Melissa, being out trying to date right now? No. I would not yeah, be. Right. I would not. I legitimately. Uh, there is a, sim a sense of empathy that I, I, I attempted to have, but I just didn't have the understanding of the depth of the sympathy and empathy I needed to have before doing Love on Stage. Yeah. Because even if you are a good dude, even if you are a good you know, woman, it doesn't mean that we're compatible with each other. That's the other part where you're literally. I did that. Learned that from just the panel I was on. Like y'all yes. are perfect except the age. Yes. Or what you want in chill. And because so many people have, and this isn't to judge them. This is just where they are. 
their non-starters be the one thing that's yes. not going to start. Yes. I just, everything about this guy is good, except he's 26. Yes. And everything about her is yes. great, except she's 40 and has three kids. And I don't want nobody with kids or vice versa. Yes. And everything else about y'all. Seems like it could work. And the other thing is uh, understanding that when couples are together, especially if they're just dating, not at the marriage point. And you're like, I don't know why these folks together. They are clearly not going to work. It's be, I don't want to be out back in the streets. I'd rather stay in this toxic relationship <laughs> with this person that at least is familiar and a body at night than to go back. <laughs> Love the wife of your youth. Out there. And for that, I get it. And People, listen, the guy was saying in the thread, a 22-year-old, right? Imagine you, you know, you're 38. Imagine what a 22 year old, 21 year old, that person is five, six years older than your son. You are going to see a child. You're not going to be like, oh, you're 21, you young thing. Boy, you playing Fortnite and I'm twist, I'm going to twist your hair the way I twist my son. Man, listen. But you, you, can you imagine? You're talking about Roth IRAs with somebody who was in high school. When you were starting your third career. Yes. You done had the banking as a career, aerospace, and then entrepreneurship. I'm sorry. You you dating someone who wasn't alive at September 11th? What are we going to talk about? I literally cannot imagine. And that person is 20. I do wonder what happened with them, though. Because 33 years at 60? Listen. He, I, I, this tweet I didn't see. He said one of them said you're gonna be chasing uh, Cialis with Red Bull, <laughs> trying to keep up with these. <laughs> and that was another one. You ain't got the cholesterol you ain't to got be the out here for this. You really listen, like dog. What you finna do? I, listen, <sighs> it is my worst nightmare outside of like. Uh, the the hard part of meeting someone. Yeah. Now where I am in life, I can't trust nobody who's gonna love Man. me for me. And I'm uncomfortable with my body. It's as much as I much. show y'all my, you know, body up, this is for jokes, but like to let someone see me naked? <laughs> oh, oh to ta- to do it with the door open? I, I cannot imagine. It's it's a lot. There's so many things you take for granted. No, 100 percent There is uh, and I, the thing is, I don't, I do not know, obviously they haven't said that's their business, their prerogative, which is, uh, I'm not going to harp on them. What the reason I'm just why talking about divorcing. people. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of people who get divorced at this age. Oh man, tons. And I just can't imagine what the reason would be. However, that's not to say maybe I'll need to separate. I don't know. Yeah. But his, like he said, I'm not trying to scare you, but you just scared me. They pegging out here. Oh, my goodness. I thought the thread was hilarious. I definitely think it's going viral. And I will say that for single men, single ladies, my heart goes out to you in a way that I didn't know was possible. Uh, Interviewing. And there are a lot of women who are about their business. There are a lot of men who are about their business because a lot of them applied for the show. But there are also a lot of women not about their business. And there are a lot of men. Not about their business. You know what I just thought about as you said that? What would be the most frustrating, I imagine, being out in the dating world is being about your business, yes, having your stuff together, and constantly matching with people who don't. I mean, you got a good job, they don't. Yes. You have great hygiene, they're musty because they don't use native. Okay? Native... It's the deodorant for me, for you. You might find out they're one of those celebrities who, who doesn't wash, why doesn't did shower, this become a thing? doesn't wear deodorant. Native is right there. I want to know. And I they're was, not using it. Please do, people. Continue. Native is right there. And you like, I don't want a shower. I, and you, everything else about them is good, except they don't except use native deodorant. They don't use native and you're deodorant. And you're trying to, you trying to be with them? And your nose won't allow you sensitive to smell. Okay. Do you even know the difference between antiperspirant and deodorant? They don't wear either, so they don't know. Antiperspirants contain aluminum, which forms a plug in your sweat glands to stop you from sweating. Native deodorant don't use that. Or parabens. Or sulfates. It's vegan and never tested on the animals. 
Native just works to keep you smelling fresh all day long. Native deodorant is made with ingredients you've heard of, like coconut oil and shea butter. You wear deodorant every day, hopefully. Shouldn't you be able to understand the ingredients that are listed? Make the switch to an aluminum-free deodorant. Making the switch to aluminum-free deodorant doesn't mean you have to sacrifice on performance. Native will keep you smelling and feeling fresh all the time. With over 10 cents, including their classics and rotating seasonals, you're guaranteed to find one you love. They have amazing Christmas scents now that Christmas is coming up. But my favorite is their uh, coconut and vanilla and the lavender and rose. Anything with lavender, anything with coconut, always. It just smells very good. And listen, obviously, black people, we be a little unsure about stuff. Yes. And we don't want to be musty. And let me tell you what. When I've worn native, me, myself, big Kev, 250, sweat easy, I was worried. You know what I'm saying? Because sometimes they ain't got that aluminum. And that must be like, I don't smell no aluminum. I'm coming out. Okay? Not with native. When I wear native, I smell fresh all day long. I love the texture. Even when I worked out, it still worked. Okay? It was effective for me, so it's going to be effective for you. Listen to this. You're going to love native as much as I do. Right now, you can save up to 20% on your first purchase. Go to nativedo.com slash love hour. Love Hour. Or use promo code Love Hour at checkout. That's, again, nativedo.com slash Love Hour. Love Hour, and that's D-E-O. D-E-O for 20% off at checkout. Nativedo.com slash Love Hour. Love Hour. 20% off. Native. Don't be funky. Don't be musty. And guess what? If you're getting divorced after 30 years. Hello. In addition to Native, you might as well sign up for Blue Chew. These girls to 2025, 20, you 60. They need a second wind. They, you need a second wind, and that peen ain't peening. We do not have the capacity, okay? You trying to impress these young girls who listen to Flo Millie on 60-year-old peen? Don't do that to yourself, playboy. She wants two or three rounds. You ain't got it like that no more, playboy, unless you're using Blue Chew. Blue Chew going to get that peen and say, you used to be 21. Let me remind Let you. Let me remind you. Of the strength you had then. This is the only way you're going to survive out here. You're going to have to have a performance enhancer. And Blue Chew is there to lift you up when you are small. Guys, especially those who are getting divorced after 30 years, you need that confidence that Blue Chew can give you there. It's a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, but in chewable tablets and at a fraction of the cost. You can take them anytime, day or night, so you can plan ahead or be ready whenever opportunity arises. She want to have car sex, and you really worried about traffic? Are we making good time? You better pop a Blue Chew, or you'll never get into that poo-poo. And that's coochie-coochie. poon poon. Process is simple. Sign up at BlueChew.com, consult with one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you'll receive the prescription within a couple of days. The best part, it's all done online. No visit to the doctor's office, no awkward conversations, and no waiting in line at the pharmacy. Blue Chew's tablets are made in the United States of America and prepared and shipped direct to your door in a discreet package. Because you're 60 years old, that means you've got adult children. They're going through your mail. Blue Chew ain't going to out you. Me, myself, personally, at my big age of 38, some days I ain't got it, okay? Some days I need a little help. I'm not ashamed, okay? I need a little help up. I use the, you know, the rail on the stairs, okay? <laughs> Blue Chew ain't nothing but a rail for your penis. You just need a little bit of oomph to get you like you used to do. And your peen gonna be hard, hard. I'm talking about those sledgehammer things. They open the door when the cops do a raid. You won't even need that. You just rear back. And Blue Chew will bust that door open, but softly for a coochie. Guys, there's nothing sexier than confidence, and Blue Chew will give you that confidence. So if you could benefit from extra confidence when it's time to perform, Blue Chew can help. And we got a special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew for free when you use our promo code LOVE, love. at checkout. Just pay $5 for shipping. That's BlueChew.com, promo code love, LOVE, to receive your first month free. Visit BlueChew.com for more details and important safety information. We thank Blue Chew for sponsoring the podcast. Ladies, Blue Chew is exclusively for men, but the end result is something you'll both enjoy. So get your man to sign up so he can tear that coochie up. And now back to the show. Uh, okay. Um, okay, so anything else on them? I feel bad. Uh, the thing outside of the jokes, the thing that I really liked that he was saying is do the work. 
Yeah, that's go what home I, and do yeah. the work. Like I know, because you probably do think it's greener. You probably think it can't be any worse than this. But I guarantee you're underestimating all the positives. You're highlighting the negatives, and you're way over highlighting what you think it's gonna be. Right. And especially if they think you have money and all that type of stuff. Yeah. You know, because Dell's retired NBA player. Mm-hmm. Uh, I guarantee the thing that they'll f- that he'll feel. I'm just focusing on him because the guy didn't. Because I'm a man is regret and feel like, man, I, I miss her. I miss this. Yeah. It felt irreconcilable, but I'd be willing to reconcile. I'll I'd reconcile. Be re- I'd be willing to I'll, reconcile. I'll, I'll, I'll reconcile. <laughs> I couldn't, I couldn't think of what the root word was. I'd be I'll be reconcile. willing to reconcile. I'd be willing I know to. we said irreconcilable, but I'll reconcile. I'll reconcile. I'll definitely reconcile. Uh, again, like I said, I haven't had this thoughts. I just don't even want to get to that point. I right. get to like do the work. This is work. You're going to have ups and downs. You're going to have good weeks, bad weeks, bad months, bad days, whatever. Sometimes you'll have them in succession. You feel like, man, right. We just ain't been clicking for a minute. Right. But nothing for me, nothing would compare to the good times or not having those times. Yeah. And little things like, not little, but things you don't even think of, like holidays. Yeah. Just being in one house. Yeah. Or your kids only having to visit you. You get out, get divorced, your kids have you, your ex-wife, and their in-laws. Let me tell you something. And only two holidays that everybody wants. That means some years you're going to be out. Being the... uh adult child of a divorce of divorced parents is the ghetto indeed zero out of zero or zero out of 10 do not recommend the ghetto because trying to negotiate how you're going to spend the holidays and what you can and can't say in front of this parent so you don't hurt their feelings while you're talking the whole entire ghetto it is so those are the streets you don't want to be in listen that is a ghetto i melissa's parents are divorced oh all of our parents guilt trip us my mom and dad my grandma melissa's mom and melissa's dad trying to make sure all of those people are appeased especially when my grandma didn't live where my mom lived it's impossible and whoever doesn't get one of those holidays is going to guilt trip the crap out of you. And they don't want New Year's and they don't want Halloween. Want and you got to wait all the way till Thanksgiving and Christmas of the next year. You don't want to do it. Or you got to they got to leave so you early to go visit your ex. Now you're feeling like you got the short end of the stick. I don't want it. I want ghetto. I want my kids to say I'm going to visit my mom and my dad. It is. They live in Santa yes. Barbara. The uh, last thing I was going to say, they were saying, why were we focusing on Dell when Sonia filed? And the reason and why. the guy is, said that. I don't yeah, care who filed. Yes. But the reason why is because Dell, uh, I mean, not Dell, uh, Solomon, Missouri. He, he's a man. He's a man. And he was doing it at. To Dell. To Dell. And to that's Del. the reason. We yeah. know she filed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God, don't bring in the truth when the jokes are there, yeah. guys. No, but I think it's important to and say I, that. Though. Also, I don't know if the. The stigma or the uh, prospects for a woman are the same. Well, I mean, they're both. uh, She's a beautiful woman. He's a good looking guy. But it's more so of like, you're in your 60s. You're setting your ways. Do you really want to? Are you going to go on a dating app? Coochies don't have to get hard. Curry's mama and daddy. Is you going to be on a dating app? Like, all right, here we go. Uh. Anything else you want to add to these people that need to? Best of luck to you, sir. Yeah, child. both of you. Go, go with God, crispy. Go with God, crispy. I don't wish it on my worst enemy. I really don't. Um, okay, all right. The next thing that we want to talk about is. Let me go to my notes. Wrong notes. It's this one. Uh oh, we have a listener question. Ah, listener question. So, and I have to remember boom, not boom, to boom, name boom, the boom, episode. Boom, boom, this. Boom, boom, All right, here we go. Hi, Melissa. <laughs> I emailed you to ask how you handled the season when Kevin didn't have a very lucrative job. I was a SoundCloud rapper. How did you keep <laughs> your spirits up and be a, a supportive wife instead of living in fear of what of the what ifs? Just to give a little backstory, I'm a doctor. I just recently graduated. Dang. I met my husband in college, and he graduated with a bachelor's degree. 
in environmental science because it is a bit tougher to find a really good job in that field he has been at wage jobs uh such as working at the gym or restaurants it's been a lot of pressure on me as a wife to know most of our finances fall on me we just bought a home which is great we try to divide up financial responsibilities but sometimes things come up short i've never been one to be materialistic or care or care about who makes more or who is the breadwinner. But sometimes the pressure gets to me and I wonder, will this be how our life will always be? He isn't a bum and he always worked and kept a job. But sometimes I stress because if I don't work full time, I work a lot of hours. We won't have insurance and a lot will go south. We have a baby on the way and a two-year-old. Dang. I know that with you being in your late 20s, better days should come, but sometimes I get discouraged. Thank you for your time. <sighs> one of the toughest seasons I think a relationship can experience, and I say one because there's several, but one of the toughest experiences I think a couple can experience is when one of you is unemployed. And and how long was that employed? About a little bit under two years. Yeah. It well, is... actually, gainfully employed. I think I worked for the church, but that wasn't gainfully. Yeah. I was for sure out of complete work for at least one year. It, uh, I think the reason why is because for the most part, you go through the person who is still employed. You are battling, enabling, and. And being an encourager. Mm -hmm. Like, you you want to say, man, I feel so bad for you. That sucks. I feel so bad. I want to be here. I want to be supportive. And then also coming into the house and <laughs> nothing is done and dinner's not cooked and you're stressed out. And now you just want to go off. Mm -hmm. And that, listen, my early unemployed days, I hadn't learned my lesson yet. Yes. Remember when I was waking up after you? Well, you those aren't, the, aren't necessarily the things that bothered me or would bother me. It is more like, okay, if you're going to wake up after me, that's fine. But can I come home to a clean house? Can I come home to dinner being cooked? Can you, can I not start, and I'm talking from a woman's perspective, can I not start a second shift of home responsibilities if you're at home yeah and so i think one of the and we did not do this but i'm going to encourage people who are in this scenario or if you know it's coming or if you're in if yeah if you know it's coming or if you're in this scenario to have an upfront conversation about responsibilities yeah we because did not do that the assumption that you will take care of household responsibilities. You will take care of the kids and you will do that. And they don't. And now you're doing it. You're just setting yourself up for resentment. I had my Madden season to continue. <laughs> nothing will piss you off more. <sighs> nothing will piss you off more than working a full day at work and coming home to your unemployed spouse playing a video game. <laughs> That you will start a ah! world war inside the four walls of your home. Yeah, I um, I learned a lot of lessons in about a week. Yes. I was like, let me get up before her. Let me make her lunch. Make the boys lunch. When she get home, let the house be clean and let the dinner be cooked. That didn't solve everything, but it prevented those arguments. Right. From happening because I'm still operating on my old mindset of like, you know, we share these responsibilities. Nah, buddy. Not when she's the sole breadwinner. I was like, I can't operate off of times that I got home after her. And even after I was employed, remember when we was in all, uh, when I was working at all deaf and I came home at seven o'clock and I don't remember what I was asking you. I was like, yeah, girl, I've been had a long day at work. And you were like, and I did too. Yes. Cause you only reason you came home before me is because your job was like 10 minutes away and mine was an hour and a half. Right. But the amount of time worked was the same. Right. You know, so, um, yeah. And I think the problem is, I believe, like, kind of like on Insecure, uh, Lawrence, I believe that's his character's name. Sometimes, uh, when you, yeah, when you get unemployed, you lose your sense of self well, and your confidence and you don't feel like yourself. And you might not have been a lay around type of person, but you low key might be slightly depressed, if not fully depressed. And now your spouse doesn't know how to navigate that. And you don't know how to navigate that. Cause I, prior to that time. And after that time, I was never out of work. I wasn't yeah. a habitual person who got fired. Right. I was never out of work, you know, not for that long. 
ever, only when I was like in college. So to my credit or maybe to Melissa's or whatever, it wasn't a, it was a new thing for me and it wasn't a consistent thing. Some people that ain't the truth. Some people will always be in between jobs. And that means your spouse is usually going to be frustrated if you know, and this lady's a doctor. I feel like if you were a doctor, I might've been less inclined. Well, I think that's the main thing here is trying to figure out, uh, again, playing the role of like, I don't want to demoralize you. I don't want yeah. to emasculate you. I don't want to, you know, plant seeds that'll come up later, even after the season of unemployment by mm -hmm. saying things that are hurtful or saying things that are mean. But at the same time, I don't want you to think that I'm not wanting you to get another job. <laughs> And I think oftentimes, I think that's the line people are walking, <laughs> is how do I be supportive and also be like, can you show me the jobs that you checked, you applied for today? That'd be great if you could just provide me with a list. So I, I just, just need to sure. know that this is not forever. Right. I need to know, and that you're trying. Yeah. But walking that line, because people initially are going to feel, um, you know, disheartened that they were fired, let go, laid off, whatever. And now they're at the house, especially if it's a prideful man. That's not what he wants to do. Like, obviously, that's going to be a really, really tough time. And when you come home after work, you're going to feel frustrated. And probably the number one thing you're going to want to do is take off your bra. But with third love, you don't always have to take off your bra because they're actually quite comfortable. Uh, yeah, uh, they are the number one selling T-shirt bra. They have a 24-7 classic T-shirt bra, which provides all the comfort and support that you need in more than 80 sizes. And you're going to need the support because if your partner is at home being a lazy bug on the couch, you're going to need support in every area that you can find. And one of those might be in the support in the way of a supportive bra. You guys know that I love third love because they have several sizes i'm actually i literally am thinking about doing a post about the color nude and that it's not a color it is all about the nude of your skin yeah so obviously my nude is not kevin's nude and kevin's nude is not joshua's nude because we're all different colors and for a brand to take that in consideration and have a um wide range of colors so that way when you're wearing white or, you know, a very lightly colored outfit and you don't want your bra to show because FYI, black women, a black bra and black underwear under white will show because of the contrast. It will show. It will so show. So you want nude. Nude you is the nude. way to go. You and want nude. nude. It's not a pinky nude if you're a brown no. skin like me. You you're actually a want a brown nude. skin guy. Yeah. Yes. So that's it. Okay. Uh, they stand by their products. If you don't like it, love it, exchanges and returns are free. Uh, they have a fitting room quiz, which will help you find your perfect size fitting bra, because that's probably one of the number one things that we get wrong as women is that we were wearing bras that are the wrong size. And so we suffer with gaps um, and just uncomfortable and straps that are really uncomfortable and all of that. So they help you right away find your perfect fitting bra so you can get a comfortable perfect size and fit and style for your lifestyle. Third Love is the largest donor of undergarments in the U.S., partnering with organizations in their local San Francisco Bay Area and across these United States. Third Love has donated over $40 million in products to help women make powerful life changes. Third Love knows you deserve to feel comfortable and confident 24-7. So right now, they're offering my listeners 20% off your first order. Go to thirdlove.com slash love hour. Love hour. Now to find your perfect fitting bra and get 20% off your first purchase. That's thirdlove.com slash love hour for 20% off today. Today. All right. I hope I educated y'all uh, women's on the uh... nudes is something you send and receive not a color. Okay. Yeah, they're like white bra show under white t-shirts. Correct. And black will too. Boom. All right. So with that, uh, some some things that you can do if you find yourself in this predicament. Is there anything you wish I did? I honestly, um, I, don't, I, I, I don't I feel like I've said this. I don't know now. I feel like you handled that time period in my life better than I even could have imagined. It was never your personality to be belittling. 
you had plenty of opportunities to be like I told you. So I feel I feel like uh, you I don't want to say massage my ego. I feel like you protected the parts of me that were needed yeah. while encouraging the parts of me that were necessary and also letting me know, you know, some of my plans weren't going to go. Cause I'm remember I was trying to make it as a standup comedian at the time. Right. And this is prior to being able to do that. You know, I was like, I'm going to throw a show. And then I did one and it was like $180. And now I was like, Ooh, I'm not going to be able to, that's not going to replace, no. you know, I was going to make like 50 K at the bank. Yeah. Um, but you were telling me like, okay, if you want to, cause that, that was like the first time I told you that I didn't want to work a real job forever and it was never my intention. And you were like news to me, yes. but you didn't say it like that. You, and you didn't say, no, you're going to work a job. That's how our life is built. Uh, you were like, you know, basically I believe in you. I support that, you know, amen. But at the same time, our bills, the way you put it is uh, you reminded me of just some true facts. Our bills are based off two incomes. Yes. And if you want to quit your job, that's fine. But let's work on a plan so that that can become a reality. You were like, that's not a thing you can just decide now that it's happened because we have mortgage, kids, daycare, food, you know, student loans and all that stuff. Some of those things are not even some. All of those things are constant, you know. And and I understood the role I took and the vows I made. So I wasn't out here like, no, I'm going to just make it. I'm going to move to L.A., you know. So I think you massaged my ego um, or protected my ego, protected my ambition. And even we're like, you should apply here. This I got you. And I, I think you were telling me that you had talked to uh, Brian's dad. It was like, they, they might be hiring at Boeing. No, you no, know. no. He came to a um, marriage enrichment. That's what they it was. They taught at marriage enrichment, and they weren't even talking about hiring. It was just like they taught and was like, I work at Boeing. And I was like, huh, I should apply. Oh, you, that's right. You got the job first. I just literally was like, I should apply. And I, I think it was just God orchestrated because honestly, yeah. in my naivete, I didn't realize that that's not something you're just like, I should apply at Boeing. And, but I did, and I got in. But still was, amazing that we both got yeah, jobs it was, there. Yeah, it was God orchestrated. But I think one of the biggest. God orchestrated. It was. That's good, right? He's the conductor. Yes. Uh, making everything work together, flow in perfect harmony. And I believe, yeah, I, that believe she that. I, I really do believe that because it literally makes no sense. But I think one of the things that people often struggle with is finding the balance between um, you chasing your dream and me realizing your dream isn't going to come to pass. What do you mean? I want to be a... You thought my dream wasn't going to come to pass? No, you're not listening. I said, I think what That's people what I said, struggle. What do you mean? I think what people, yes, thank you. I think what people struggle with is their spouse saying, this is my dream. I want you to support me. And the spouse feeling like, that's not going to happen. Got it. You should just get a job. <laughs> because that's not going to happen. I think that's the part that is difficult for people. Walking the line of saying, you need to get a job because the dream that you are chasing isn't going to come. Yeah. So how do you, I think the thing about that is either pivoting the dream, changing what the dream looks like yeah. so that maybe you can still pursue the dream. But I also, I need your support in this household financially. And what that looked like for us is me getting a regular job. I feel like you need a timeline. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I got a regular job and then I did stand up on the weekends or after work and I did videos after working on the weekends and that satisfied my creativity or need for, cre to express myself creatively and my need to feel like I'm chasing my dreams. And eventually it opened the doors for me to quit my job. Right. You know, writing and directing Zay's sketch, writing and directing, acting in the all right TV stuff. Uh, but, but, but this was all still after work and on the weekends, which is why I think people have to understand that in the supportive part, it doesn't mean to me, to me, Melissa, to, you, Lisa? to me, Melissa, I would actually encourage couples in this position to tell their spouse. I don't, if you do not believe in the dream, don't say that out loud. But saying something like, I do believe in you, but I also 
today, this month, need your financial support. Right. So Will you how, partner with me yes, by getting a job? Can you partner <laughs> with me? So how can I, how can you chase this dream in a way that allows you the opportunity to chase it uh, in a way that isn't financially gainful, but yeah. also still contribute to the household? Because the other thing, I agree with everything you just said. The other thing that I had to understand we had an agreement. There was a understanding yeah. that we were in it together, meaning we were both going to work at this same level. Right. I don't think we ever said you should be making 50 K you should be making 50 K. And I don't think I ever said, I know I didn't say to her, I'm going to quit my job one day. You know, Melissa knew that I wanted to do plays and do stand up and stuff. I thought you were about to say something else. I was like, no, I did not know, but okay, <laughs> I did know that. But I never said I actually want to quit my job and do this. I only said that because I got fired and I was like, look at God. And God was like, boy, don't look at me. You got fired because you were a terrible employee, not right. because it's your time. Uh, and the difference between the time where I thought it was for me and when it was actually was like four years. Right. And then when I moved to L.A., I ended up getting a job again because that was still God orchestrated. That The only reason we're able to have the Kevin State streaming service is because of my time working a regular job. Mm -hmm. So that path that your spouse is looking for, none of it's linear. Like I didn't immediately even get a good job. Okay. I just got a job. I remember that actually the plan was you got to get something before unemployment runs out. Yes. And that's what happened. I got something. I'm, I'm talking about I had maybe two more checks. Yes. And I got a job there. And then that was like, okay, that stops the bleeding. And then it was like, you got to get something to where we can actually live again. And also the other thing, Melissa, people don't know, Melissa also sacrificed her own self. She went from getting her hair done regularly to yeah. being like, well, perms are a thing of the past. <laughs> Protective style. Melissa got her nails done all the time when we were in high school because she worked her own job. During this time in our life, nails were done by her. I mean, they're all, it's all a luxury, but yeah, I think that's another thing is talking about, you know, the luxuries that you're going, what expenses can you cut? Because the other thing is I'm cutting expenses because maybe I'm the one doing the bills and your partner is still buying shoes. Right. Or buying clothes. That was another question I got. Like, how do I, those, that's why you have to have the conversation up front. That's one thing that I wish we had done earlier. Like by God's grace, it kind of worked out where I, I, I guess I knew enough to kind of navigate this, but even still, I wish that the conversation was had up front and we were more direct about this is what we will be doing, this is what we won't be doing, this is the timeline, this is what support looks like, this is the point at which I signed up to support you, but at, you know, seven months, I'm exhausted, I'm tired, this is overwhelming, yeah. I'm stressed, we need to come back to the table, and that's an open dialogue without the other partner internalizing that as you don't support me. Yeah, and I was, um, how do I say this, I want to still make myself look good. Hello. I was fragile uh -huh. at that time emotionally. And I think had you handled that differently, I think it would have had an adverse, uh, not right, uh, adverse effect or impact. I never know if it's effect or affect. Impact works for both. Yeah. It would have had a negative or it's adverse. cause and effect and affect is impact. Okay. Dif negative impact <laughs> <laughs> on our marriage. So I, you know, again, kudos to you i don't know how did you know what to how did you know how to handle me that, and that's why i literally said that it's god's grace i always struggle with answering this question simply because i fumbled my way into a right answer it wasn't as intentional as i could be ha if it happened Hindsight, now. Yeah. yeah uh if it happened now i like i do know enough to kind of navigate it differently yeah. then it was just, you know, God's grace that allowed me to do, you know, what we did. But again, I think the, the, uh, what I would say today, the advice I would give today, number one, have the conversation up front. Yeah. What does support look like? And put a time frame on it, especially if it is, I want to chase my dream. Yeah. Put a timeline. Okay. If you're on unemployment, align it to that. You have, you know, unemployment can float us. For right. the next six months. So you have six months to replace your income or set a new target. And also it meant if you're not working, the kids cannot be in daycare. Yes. 
because it's too, you know, yes. I, I wasn't going to be able to have that. I mean, there was a need, but some people really be trying to maintain the same lifestyle right. as if they were both working. And that's just yeah. not, it's not realistic. Right. So I had to be like, I had took on more duties in the house than I had prior. I mean, we're kind of split, but when we were, when I was unemployed, I took on the lion's share of, of that because Melissa was the only one bringing in the yeah. bread. So I had to let go of some of those, like, I'm a man, you know, but I never really had that anyway. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, that's what I think a lot of times people struggle is for those reasons. Yes. A lot of times the person who's unemployed has to take on more of the shift than the person who's gainfully employed. Right. Because that's the only way that the household's going to work unless one of those people is filthy rich yeah. and it doesn't really matter. And it doesn't but if that's the case, that. you wouldn't be writing yeah, in. Yeah, you wouldn't be writing in if you yeah. have to, you know. So uh, that would be my advice is, number one, to have the conversation up front. Set a timeline. Set a timeline. Set a timeline. Yeah. And just come to a mutually agreed upon, you know, a uh, plan of action yeah. of, you know, six months. This is the opportunity and your outside job or whatever, your dream chasing venture needs to bring in at least $30,000. Let's say they're making 50, but you can sacrifice here, sacrifice here, sacrifice here. You need to make at least $30,000. You have six months to figure it out. And if it doesn't work, maybe your outside income ends up earning 10. Okay, well then get a part-time job so you yeah. can still do both because we've still agreed to, you know, the 30,000 or whatever. I think those are the plan of actions that most people do not have and so navigating this this scenario you don't say anything and you don't say anything because you feel like that's being supportive resentment steadily grows yep and then one day you're going to have a massive blow up absolutely because you are tired you are exhausted and you feel taken advantage of yes. so you need to set those parameters early to prevent that from happening later i agree wholeheartedly okay anything else you want to add nope all right, you guys, thank you so much for joining us for today's Love Hour episode. Until the next time, bye.